of course his foot blowing through the bottom of his shoe and the right knee sprain that has cost him the better part of the last six games but he's back and Duke fans are obviously relieved happy thrilled to see a prospective player of the year candidate back for them how does it change what do you expect how does it what does it mean to Duke to get him back tonight well he's had three games where he's had full or three practices excuse me where he's had full contact and talking to the Duke assistant coaches before the game they said in the last full scrimmage they had he was the old Zion went 13 of 14 was making Zion Williamson like plays the question is will he do it at that level in a 40 minute game and can he do it back to back and perhaps back to back to back we'll have to see but you're looking at one of the truly special players that we've seen really in ACC history and he's proven it being ACC player of the year he leads the conference in field goal percentage 22 points a game uh, an outstanding rebounder and he does it at the defensive end as well leading the league in steals one of the top sh uh, shot blockers in the league Zion Williamson never seen anything like him and he's still got that megawatt smile he's obviously happy to be healthy and playing again for more here's Allison Williams like a bolt of energy that's how associate head coach John Shire described Zion Williamson's return to this lineup the question is how will Zion's energy be the good news is he's participated fully in practice all week his conditioning is good but Duke realizes that game speed is different than practice speed and there's no plan to necessarily limit his minutes but they will keep an eye on him throughout the course of the game and sub him and rest him according to feel so Duke is closer to full strength no Marquise ball but they've got a Williams in the back Syracuse is not at full strength their leading scorer Tyus battle who scored 32 in the oranges win over Duke at Cameron is out again tonight with a bruised back well he is all ACC performer he averages 17 points per game and he can make challenge shots he had 32 points in the win at Duke he had 31 on the road at Boston College he's a big-time player and without him they are Syracuse gonna have to manufacture points they're gonna have to score off their defense and take it the other way where they can play ahead of the Duke defense and they're gonna have to knock threes down now they knocked in 12 threes against Pittsburgh last night now Pittsburgh played a ton of zone but Buddy Beheim able to knock down some threes Elijah Hughes knocking them down and Frank Howard also knocking them down this is against the zone now watch the baseline Elijah Elijah Hughes the transfer from East Carolina able to get his feet set gets fouled knocks it down and Frank Howard able to get a lane and then look opposite and find Hughes again for the catch and shoot three. We mentioned 12 of 27 from three point range and Buddy Beheim, who had 20 points a career high, had a terrific ball game to go along with six rebounds and four assists in that game against Pittsburgh. Uh, those, those three guys are going to have to have big games in the absence of Tyus Battle if, uh, if Syracuse is going to have a chance to win this game. Syracuse winning at Duke, Duke winning at Syracuse, but this is the closest to full strength that the Blue Devils have been in any of the three games against the Orange this season. Ron Groover, Brian Dorsey, Bill Covington are the officials tonight. Duke and White, the three seed, Syracuse the sixth seed in Orange, and we're underway here in Charlotte with Williamson winning the tip as we bring you tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Geico. And a look at the starting five. For the Blue Devils with Williamson back, it's the four freshmen and Javin Delorier, the fifth starter tonight for Duke. And it's initially Williamson in the middle of that zone at the free throw line. And right away we've got a held a ball and the possession arrow will give it to the Orange as you check out the starting lineup for them. Buddy Beheim with his second start in as many games and his fourth start on the season. A Pascal Chuku was good last night for Syracuse and was very good for the Orange in their win over Duke down at Cameron. Yeah, he had 10 points, 18 rebounds in that win that Syracuse had at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And Chuku's going to have to be a force in the middle. And having Zion Williamson play in the middle of that 2-3 zone means he's going to engage Chuku and make him come up and guard him. And I think you'll see Williamson play most of the possessions in the middle of that zone rather than R.J. Barrett because he can make plays. He's also a really good passer. Williamson guarding O'Shea Brissett at the outset. Gambled for the steal, didn't get it. Frank Howard, who had a nice night last night for the Orange, knocks down the early three. Boy, that's the kind of start that Syracuse needed to get some confidence. They've got some length up at the top of the zone with Frank Howard, Buddy Beheim. Beheim, not the defender that Tyus Battle is, but Frank Howard, one of the best defenders I've seen at Syracuse in the top of the zone. Another turnover, just a, a quick bounce pass, trying to get it in the middle, and the length of Syracuse able to deflect it, knock it away. 
deceptive pass. Beheim with a shot fake, driving on Reddish, kick back to Brissett. Boy, the ball is moving well for Syracuse to start. Elijah Hughes up top for Chuku, a little bit behind him. Good idea, just not well executed. Beheim and Howard both up at the top of that zone, both about 6'5", 6 6'6". 6 6. Hughes and Brissett down on the baseline along with Chuku in the middle. It's not enough just to get the ball into the middle. You have to get good movement. There's Zion Williamson. When he gets an angle, forget it. And he might be giving out seven inches in height to Chuku, but he's got him by about 60 or 70 pounds. And also a vertical of 45, doesn't yeah, it? That's true. They, they might start <laughs> at the same spot on the floor, but he's got a couple extra steps yeah. on that ladder. The great equalizer. Howard started this year with an injury, got off to a slow start, but again, a big night last night against Pitt. Nice look to Bayheim, who's looking for help, and Williamson comes up with the steal, and here he goes! Transition dunk, knee, check. <laughs> he looks okay to me. Yes, he does. They obviously wanted to be sure he was 100% before they put him back in. Ball's loose again. DeLaurier comes up with it. Good pass. And it's R.J. Barrett who is fouled at the rim by Chuku. Boy, that ball hit the... He hit the rim with it before he got fouled. But Zion Williamson in the open floor. I mean, who is going to stop this? And that knee looked just fine there. Leads the ACC in steals, and that's why. He read the eyes of Buddy Beheim, knew that the play was going to be behind the action, and was able to shoot that gap. wonder if we'll see this again on SportsCenter. <laughs> in addition to being the ACC Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year, he also made the ACC All-Defensive Team. Sporting News National Player of the Year, and that's not the last award he's going to get. There it makes them both 6-3 Duke in the early going 68% from the field ridiculously efficient and among league leaders as you can see in scoring rebounding blocks and steals floater Howard actually a pass up to Chuku and that time they executed better well 2-2-1 two, two, three-quarter court pressure by Duke it was broken by passing to Elijah Hughes in the corner and anytime you drive it and the middle guy helps up the Basket protector helps up. You can just lob it up to the rim. Boy, boy, what a rebound by Zion Williamson. And a Syracuse foul. It'll be Elijah Hughes. Number two. Or do they give it to Chuku? Looks like he's jumping off a trampoline. It's Chuku, and that's already the second foul on Pascal Chuku. And Jim Beheim's going to make a substitution. O'Shea Brissett will go in. Let Zion Williamson leave the floor here. Are you kidding me? That was, that was a standstill two-footed jump. And now another foul. They're going right into Williamson at every opportunity. Marek Dolajai has just picked up a foul. And Syracuse, because Jim Beheim likes to recruit guys with a lot of length for that 2-3 zone, they do not have a lot of bulk. Williamson obviously has a lot of bulk and uh, it's going to be a tough situation in the middle for somebody like Dolajai who's a hundred pounds lighter than Williamson up top for Williamson on the inbounds knocked away Howard trying to go all the way and he will Syracuse back on top Boy, nice play by Frank Howard coming off an 18 point game against Pittsburgh in which he went four of seven from three point range and if he continues to get a piece of the paint, he can have another really good game for the Orange. But getting out quickly in transition and beating Duke down the floor is the way that Syracuse is going to have a chance to win this game. If they're going to grind it out as a half-court team, Duke's going to be able to pressure him too much, and I don't think Syracuse is going to be able to score efficiently. Syracuse has to score off its defense, and they've got to get out in transition. You see Zion Williamson on the bench. Jack White just came in for the first time. And you wonder if Mike Krzyzewski might monitor or curtail the minutes of Williamson 
a little a little bit here, especially around media timeouts. Yeah, just give him a blow from yeah. time to time, and you know, he'll get back into it quick. The the game that will really be the test. What, another great drive by Brissett. A strong move by the Canadian against his fellow Canadian. Going against R.J. Barrett, and Barrett just dropped that left foot and opened up the lane for a straight line drive by the Mississauga native. Both Mississauga natives. You spent some time up there in August? I did, and yeah. went to a fabulous, you took me to a fabulous <laughs> local restaurant yes. that the, I was the just name blown of which away slips by. my mind. Yes, I think it's called Subway. <laughs> it really gave, me a, really gave me a fantastic yeah. view of what yeah. it's like to be a Canadian, a Mississaugan. Brissett, two years older than Barrett, both from Mississauga, know each other but never played with or against one another due to the age difference. But when Brissett drives like that, too, sometimes he's an inside guy, sometimes he's a perimeter guy, but he can be effective inside. Around and out for Howard and the rebound to Deloria. Even though Howard missed that shot, I like the shot. Get something early when it's available. I'm not sure Syracuse would have gotten a better shot if they'd you know, moved the ball around five on five. Reddish with the drive. And another Syracuse foul. Syracuse was looking for a charge there, but Zion Williamson in the open floor, if people were wondering, would he be the same? The rim says yes. Welcome back. Zion Williamson with a big dunk and four points early in his first game back after missing the last six following a knee injury suffered in the first game against Carolina. Of course, that injury occurred when he blew out his shoe early in the game. Now, in that game, he was wearing the Paul George 2.5 version of shoes. Tonight, he's wearing the Kyrie 4s. It's a version of the shoe that he wore at the beginning of the season for a bit. He's gone back to that, but guys, these are not regular Kyries. This is a custom shoe made by Nike they sent a team to Durham to work with Zion to address his specific needs they'll do this from time to time with athletes that have certain needs when it comes to their shoe wear so while this is the Kyrie 4 it is a custom sneaker for Zion from Nike and Nike actually released a statement on his return saying we are thrilled to see Zion returning to the court after working closely with Duke basketball team to examine the issue we are confident this was an isolated incident all right, Allison, thank you. And at the next level, it goes without saying that Zion figures to be able to augment his primary source of income a little bit in the uh, in the shoe area. He's certainly a marketable young man. He will sign a gigantic shoe deal. Yep. Syracuse leading by two, five minutes in, but some foul trouble for the Orange, who are not deep, as Marek Dolajai and Pascal Chuku each have two fouls already. So Barama Sidibe is in off the bench. Beheim gets inside. Floater in and out. Duke ball. Trey Jones one-on-one -on -one with Frank Howard. And what a rejection by the help defender, Elijah Hughes. Well, Hughes coming from right down the middle. And because Frank Howard was able to slow Trey Jones down just a bit, that allowed Elijah Hughes to come over and block that shot because... Trey Jones was shooting it on the way down. So a really good job by Frank Howard. And then a great job by Elijah Hughes. Jalen Carey's coming to the first into the game for the first time. A freshman from Harlem as Bayheim goes to the bench. Sadibe knocks it away. Another turnover. And then Howard lost it on the way up, and it's Duke Ball. Listen, well, missed opportunities here. Syracuse could be out to a larger lead here. Yeah, most of Duke's scoring has really come off Syracuse turnovers in the half court. Duke hasn't really gotten much of anything. They've coughed the ball up a few times trying to throw it in the middle, and you can't just rely on, on throwing the ball into the middle of the zone. You have to get movement by those around the defense as well, on the outside of the defense. Barrett with an air ball on the three. A lot of teams take a lot of threes against the zone in the win or in the loss to Syracuse down at Cameron and granted an overtime game, but Duke took 43 threes in that game. Made only nine of them. A guy who's played well in both games against Syracuse, though, Alex O'Connell, has now checked in for the Blue Devils. Well, Alex O'Connell can find openings, and he's an outstanding shooter. At 16 in one game against Syracuse, 20 in the other. Good, good pass. 
Howard with a pull up not there and down with a rebound is RJ Barrett who averages about seven and a half boards per game RJ Barrett one of the really good guard rebounders in the country especially on the defensive end and there's where he was so successful against Syracuse at the Carrier Dome he misses but Williamson follows just a great offensive rebounder averages about three offensive rebounds per game it's so hard to block out especially in the zone and as you mentioned about the three-point shots against the zone, what Syracuse's zone wants you to do is take shots you normally don't take. They want you to take a different type of shot. DeLaurier with a block on Brissett, and Williamson comes up with a loose ball. How about the outlet by Williamson? Came up with it, but he didn't have it for very long before he found Alex O'Connell. Again, Duke is still down a man. Marquise Bolden sprained his knee in the Carolina game on Saturday. He will not play at all here this week in Charlotte as Barrett knocks down a three to put Duke on top. You know, when R.J. Barrett gets his feet set and takes a little bit of time, he is a good three-point shooter. It's when he's shooting on the move that it's more of a problem. Hughes challenging a trio of defenders. Sadibe got O'Connell in the air, and he draws the foul. It's hard to believe there was no call of any kind on all that contact on the drive. Barama Sidibe forced into, into some early action because of foul trouble on Shuku and Dolajai. Not a great free throw shooter. Syracuse coming in as the sixth seed here in the ACC tournament. 20 and 12 on the season, 10 and 8 in the league, and some good wins. The win at Duke. They beat Louisville, beat a couple of mid-major conference champs like Colgate and Northeastern teams that are headed to the tournament. Joe Lenardi's got them as a nine. Are they, and I, and I believe they are, are they safely in oh, the tournament yeah. right now? Oh, it's yeah. not close. Yeah. yeah, they have to take 68 teams. To yeah, they're taking them. And, and I would not, look, I know the numbers say that it is, but Old Dominion's not a bad loss. Like, Jeff Jones has a really good team. And I, I think that knee's okay, yeah. Dan. My, my expert medical yes. opinion after watching Zion Williamson dunk twice <laughs> is I think he's okay. He looks all right. The, the force that he has when he leaves the floor and then just how nimble he is he's never seen anything like it Jalen Carey who's got terrific speed knocks down a jumper and it brings the orange back within three his minutes were pretty good at the beginning fluctuated a lot during the season they got some good minutes out of him last night against Pitt now Williamson for three so a couple of dunks and a three-pointer for Zion in his return doesn't seem like it's taken him too long to Get his feel back. He hits the deck trying to get the loose ball, but he was out of bounds as he touched the ball, so it'll belong to Syracuse. Well, Zion Williamson averages 22 points per game, about nine rebounds, and this is one reason he shoots 68% from the floor. Actually, that's from the air. Uh, knocking down threes, he has done it all early against Syracuse. He is back. ESPN's exclusive. For tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Principal. And a look at ACC Bracketology from Joe Lenardi. Right now has Virginia as one, Carolina as one. Remember, Duke's lost three of their last six, albeit none of them really, other than 36 seconds with Zion Williamson. And always an interesting question. Let's say Duke goes on, plays great here. How does the committee evaluate them? Do they just look at what they've done with Zion Williamson as oh. he's over the top again? Oh, what a tremendous play first by Trey Jones. And then R.J. Barrett just throwing it. You can throw it wherever you want, and Zion Williamson can go get it. My goodness. Now he comes up with a steal, looks ahead to Barrett, and he'll lay it in as the lead grows. And the ooing and eyeing is growing here in Charlotte as well. Boy, they, they needed to stop the game there and just throw the show the replays <laughs> to everybody in the building. That was ridiculous. I mean, Zion Williamson, 6 of 6 from the floor. He's got 4 rebounds, 13 points, 2 steals, and he's played 8 minutes. Howard lost it. Duke has it. And Carey just leaning a shoulder into Reddish to commit the foul. Boy, first watch the play by Trey Jones to get it to R.J. Barrett. I mean, what a fantastic play by Jones ball goes up in the air and he, that was a spectacular play now the end 
was beyond spectacular, but you don't see plays made like Trey Jones just made very often. Oh, my goodness. That's what we've been missing for the last five or six games, whatever it is. I want a refund. <laughs> 13 points, six for six, as you mentioned. Three dunks and a three-pointer already for Williamson. Reddish, no. Oh, Williamson again. This is ridiculous. What a rebound. I mean, Even his own teammates can't believe it. I mean, look at the people in the crowd. Their mouths are on the floor. Their, their jaws on the floor. I mean, that's an above-the-rim rebound off of two feet. You know, it's not like he's getting these crazy run-ups here. I mean, and, and he's going up against good athletes. Just absurd. All men are created equal. Yeah, right. <laughs> Third foul on Shuku. He goes right back to the bench. We're going to see Mr. Jefferson's University. I know our founding fathers said all men are created equal, but I don't think they saw Zion Williamson <laughs> play basketball. In fact, I know they did. Not, not a lot of rust on his game, it appears, and and not playing tentatively either. And when people come back from injuries, a lot of times they're afraid to kind of really let it loose. Zion's letting it loose tonight. And for Jim Beheim, not a lot of answers right now. Well, what answers could you have? I mean, it's... How do you describe what we're seeing? It's, uh, it's remarkable. And a foul. I mean, the whole game opens up for Trey Jones and R.J. Barrett because of the presence of Zion Williamson. And that's one of the reasons Mike Krzyzewski didn't make any changes while Williamson was gone, because he knew he was coming back. And what are you going to do, change everything and then have to change back? Uh, you know, very interesting calculation, but I think the right one. You know, it's funny, we talk about the postseason awards, player of the year, rookie of the year, and so on. If you look back to the preseason picks in the ACC, Zion Williamson was not chosen preseason first team all ACC. He was chosen second team. Well, not everybody would seen him. Right. I mean, we, we had the yeah. luxury of watching him for three games and all those practices yep. in Canada. And then being able to talk about it, and you know, when we were at Subway, <laughs> uh, but but I mean it was it, w w once you saw that in Canada you're like are you kidding me yeah. never seen anything like this guy but who, who could wrap their head around it until they'd seen it and remember early on in the season when we had the Champions Classic and that's where the line oh my god came from when they describe Zion Williamson and like you'll see you know we won't have to explain it much after you see him and and it only took one game and then at, you know after the blowout of Kentucky everybody knew then Syracuse just 11 points in almost 11 minutes right now. Elijah Hughes checks out the shot clock, and he'll launch a deep three and knock it down. Elijah Hughes is the top three-point shooter on this team that made 83s on the season coming into this one. They had a good game against Pittsburgh. They put up 18 in that one. Offensive foul on Cam Reddish as Sidibe steps in to take a charge. Sidibe having to play extended minutes. Dolajai in foul trouble, who's back in the game, and just was able to go straight up, and that was offense-initiated contact. Williamson on the bench right now. 15 points, 7 for 7, 5 rebounds, 3 dunks. Duke with a 9-point lead on the orange. As the winner of this will take on North Carolina tomorrow night in the second semifinal here with the ACC tournament. A switch out front. Duke was able to switch one through five. Good hands by Barrett. Hughes giving chase, and Barrett will finish. Boy, Duke has scored so many points off its defense, and Hughes is in the crowd. He went right over the top of the camera people there into the cheerleaders. Looks like he's okay. R.J. Barrett with the 
quick hands, able to keep his hands up, take that pass away that was intended for Buddy Beheim, And just kind of pulled up a little bit and let Elijah Hughes fly on by, then finish that thing with the left hand. He's a lefty. Boy, Duke looks like a completely different team with Williamson in the lineup. I know he's not on the floor right now, but they are throwing punches on the defensive end and attacking defensively. They've scored 14 of their points, Jay, off Syracuse turnovers. And look, Syracuse can't get into anything. Look yeah. how far out they're starting their offense. Deep one for Howard. Now, got to remember that Syracuse doesn't have Tyus Battle in the ball game. He's been out for this entire ACC tournament thus far. And you take in a 17, 18 point a game score that's capable of a 30 point night and can make contested shots. Yeah, that's a big loss for Syracuse. Hard to generate offense. Well, the story has been Zion Williamson and his return to the floor and then his return off the floor. He has been a high wire act for every minute he's been in this game. My goodness. Well, tournament presented by New York Life continues tonight from Las Vegas. Arizona, UCLA right now. Arizona State's up 16 at halftime and we'll have Oregon and Utah here on ESPN after the Duke Syracuse game tonight for the right to play in the semifinals. I still think the most dangerous team for Washington the number one seed is going to be Colorado. Kinley Wright and Tyler Bay both first team all Pac-12 performers. Tad Boyle's got a good team. They, they've had some consistency issues throughout the course of the season but Buffaloes are playing well. Don't forget to check out our alternate angle of tonight's game, the New York Life Above the Rim Cam, streaming live on the ESPN app. And one player more than any other you can watch above the rim, that's Zion Williamson. Nine minutes Zion Williamson's played in this game. He's got 15 points, five rebounds, and four steals. He's seven of seven from the field. That's good. <laughs> That's analysis. Here's That's Allison good. Williams. Hey there, Dan. A big concern for Jim Beheim right now with his team is the turnovers. They have nine of them, and they've led to 14 Duke points. So really emphasizing during that last time out that they need to take care of and value the basketball. And then also, guys, it's the 50-50 battles, which right now they're losing to Duke. That's a good point, Allison. It's just so difficult right now with the pressure that Duke is putting on Syracuse. And that's really how the game at Duke started. You know, Duke had a, an early 12-point lead because of that pressure, and then Trey Jones was injured, and that pressure kind of went away, and all of a sudden, you know, Syracuse didn't have to turn its back anymore. They weren't forced further out on the floor, and they could start throwing punches. O'Connell, who made nine threes in the two regular season again. O'Connell scored 16 points in the game at Duke and then had 20 points in the win at Syracuse. Remember Mike Krzyzewski saying that with Williamson out, one of the benefits, if you want to call it a benefit, was he, he put it, they found Alex O'Connell. So he's become a reliable sub now off the bench. Yeah, he wasn't playing very much. Jack White got off to a great start this season, but White has struggled for the most part to shoot the ball in the last several weeks. So the Laurier got some minutes. O'Connell got some minutes. And obviously against his own team, a guy like O'Connell can come in handy. Another steal by Williamson. Now Duke's been turning the ball over in addition. There's another turnover. I mean, Allison Williams just talked about the nine turnovers that Syracuse has, but Duke's just about matched them. What's the, well, there it is, nine. That's remarkable, the amount of turnovers we've seen in this first half. Buddy Beheim back into the game for the Orange. Zion Williamson has played 11 of the 14 minutes so far. In his return from the knee sprain three weeks ago. Look how far out that yeah. Syracuse has to start everything. Sadibe, nice look in the corner. Hughes. Yeah. And Sadibe wins the battle. Went after that with two hands. They need minutes out of him because of foul trouble to Chuku and Dolajai. Carey, just nowhere to go. Ran right into Reddish and Delorier. Well, Carey is going to be a good player. 
He's very talented. At 26 points earlier this year against UConn. I think he had seven rebounds in that game, too, if I remember right. But he's getting a lot of reps in practice, just doesn't play a lot of minutes. And trying to go over the top for Williamson again, and another Syracuse foul. A little hip check is the sign there from Bill Covington as the foul goes on Elijah Hughes. Zion Williamson starting outside the three-point line. And just as soon as everybody turns around, he's able to get a lane to the to the basket. And Hughes saw him out of the corner of his eye and just came down and gave him a little check to make sure he couldn't get to the rim. It's really the free throw line is really the only place that Syracuse has been able to stop Zion Williamson. I think that's his first make. Yeah, one for four now in the night. On the season, Williamson a 67% free throw shooter. And when, when healthy, obviously Duke can be as good, if not better, than anybody in the country. The two issues that have kind of crept up on them from time to time are free throw shooting and obviously three point shooting, generally speaking, has not been a strength for them this year. That was a big time strength that Virginia when yeah. they went 13 of 21 from three. But you're right, this is not a great shooting team. Good offensive foul. Good job by. Elijah Hughes and just not a very smart drive by Alex O'Connell and Duke with yet another turnover they could really be stretching this lead out come to a two-footed jump stop and then make that pass or drop it off you had Williamson there Delorier coming down the lane but O'Connell's given some good minutes he's got a three reddish has a free throw and the other 25 points belong to Zion Williamson and RJ Barrett Williamson's got 16 and Barrett's got nine Barrett on the bench right now. Williamson in the game. And you're right. Their defensive pressure has been impressive from the moment the game began. And it's not just Trey Jones. I mean, you see Cam Reddish out guarding Elijah Hughes, making it difficult to get the ball up. Anytime you can make a ball handler turn his back, you're taking away vision and making running offense really difficult. Howard muscles his way in on Jones, misses the shot. Boy, muscles is right. Trey Jones makes you think more about him than running your offense. And he's a such an excellent on-ball defender. And remember the ACC all-defensive team as Williamson, that patented spin to his right shoulder, can't finish, but he's going back to the line. And that spin so powerful and quick at the same time. Now you can... Scout all you want and say hey, you know He's gonna take it one way and then spin back so he can get to his left hand it's Just stopping it because he's so powerful going to his right and then spinning back Magic's here Magic Johnson Rob Polinka both here from the Lakers I think they heard somebody was coming back. I don't know <laughs> Pat Riley here a little bit earlier. One of two for Williamson. And Duke right now doubling up the orange. Here comes the double team with Williamson. And Jack White called for reaching around on Sidibe. It's an interesting guy going forward. I mean, at the beginning of the season, White was making shots and playing with his usual energy, offensive rebounding, loose balls, and so forth. And then he endured an 0 for 28 stretch from beyond the arc. Now he has made five threes in his last three games, but when he's knocking down shots, he's a very valuable reserve for the Blue Devils. Yeah, even when he's not, he's a valuable rebounder. He can block shots. He's a good defender, and he's actually a good passer. But the the slump, the shooting slump, if you want to call it that, kind of started at Wake Forest, and then really became an issue against Syracuse after Trey Jones got hurt. I think he was 0 of 10 from three in that one. And then, you know, really maybe I'm sure got in his head and became a confidence issue and he started to get mired in it. But the last few games, he shot it much, much better. And, uh, and it's really elevated the rest of his game as well because Jack White is a good player. Went three for three from beyond the arc in a game a couple of weeks ago against Miami and is five for 10. Overall in his last three games from three-point range Jones and the rebound to Hughes well, Jim Bayon does not want his zone to really even guard Trey Jones on shots, you know get a handout But they're not worried about him making perimeter jumpers. They want to keep him out of the lane 
Brissett trying to go over the top to Sidibe, but an errant pass results in another turnover and another dunk for Zion. Wow. It wasn't like he had a clear path to the basket either. He looks like he's playing on a nerf. <laughs> And he doesn't look like he missed three minutes, much less three weeks with a knee injury. I mean, the only the only period of this game where he's looked a little out of sync has been at the thing else has been magnificent. I, I have a pretty good idea what Sports Center is going to be running tonight. Do they have ESPN's exclusive presentation. Is, is it to wrap your head around Zion Williamson? Watch this rebound. Look at Mark Dolajai and Pascal Chuku. They're looking at him. Like, what do you do, man? <laughs> like, what are we going to do? Zion Williamson is 8 of 8 from the field. He's got 19 points, 8 rebounds, 5 steals in 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Are you kidding me? That's a spectacular yeah. game, let alone a first half. Loader by Howard with a shot clock running down, 32-17. And we understand we're experiencing some technical difficulties. We apologize for those as the feed is going in and out. We've got some very talented people working on that and trying to fix it as soon as possible. And a Duke turnover. Well, yet another turnover in this ball game. Duke now has 11 turnovers. That matches Syracuse's 11 turnovers. I mean, how many points would Duke have in this game if they were taking a little bit better care of the ball? Dolajai checks back in for the first time in a long time. Two early fouls. And Syracuse fans will remember well when Dolajai in the game in Durham took a charge on Zion Williamson. And he got the worst of it, to say the least. Knocked him out for the rest of the game. Howard for three and Frank Howard is playing well tonight. He's knocking down some shots his second three of the game and trying to get the orange back into it. Well Frank Howard has the ultimate green light without Tyus battle in the ball game. They have to have scoring out of Frank Howard. Trey Jones no loose ball bounces around Williamson's got it and reverses it up and in nine for nine. Well, you try to knock the ball away from a Duke player, winds up going to Williamson for an easy basket, or at least he makes it look easy. 21 and 9 before halftime. That's a pretty good half. <laughs> Howard, contested jumper over Trey Jones. Boy, what a first half that Frank Howard is having. Where would Syracuse be without him? He's got more than half of their points. Zion Williamson's easily got more than half of the Duke points. Delorier blocked from behind. Dolajai is down again. He got run into and is very slow to get up. Another three for Frank Howard. Cuts it down to nine. And Mike Krzyzewski unhappy with his team's execution and their transition defense. Frank Howard keeping Syracuse in it. Introducing Audi halftime report as you can see Reese Davis Seth Greenberg Jay Williams They'll tell you all about what's going on to the ACC earlier today and tonight including Florida State needing overtime to beat Virginia Tech and North Carolina advancing with a win over Louisville the Tar Heels will play the winner of this one in the second semifinal tomorrow night. Well Frank Howard has played some excellent basketball the last several minutes and he has been hunting his shot and trying to get it early before the Duke defense can get set two threes in a row and it is back to a nine point game no longer a double digit lead and Frank Howard 15 points three of four from three coming off a an 18 point game against Pittsburgh so he has had Terrific play on the offensive end in this ACC tournament. He's got the last 10 Syracuse points. Barrett doesn't get the bounce on the three, and a Brissette rips down the rebound, and here comes Howard again. Well, he got away with a walk, Buddy Beheim. Again, Jones on Howard. And Howard told Brissette to go away. He didn't want the ball screen. It's just bringing a crowd to him. 
Buddy wow. Bayheim for three, and it's a six-point game. Well, we talked about what Syracuse needed to do. They've been scoring early in the clock and knocking shots down. What a big shot by Bayheim. And Syracuse really cutting into this deficit in the final minutes of the first half. Duke can basically run it down, about a three-and-a-half second difference. They'll take it down to the end of the shot clock, still have time on the game clock for an offensive rebound. Three to shoot. Jones for three. Bayheim's got it. Brissett. And they can't get a shot off in time. But still, Syracuse finishing the half on a 13-2 run to make a game of it in spite of a phenomenal first half in his return for Zion Williamson. 21 points, 9 rebounds, 5 to steal. It's 5 steals. Lots to talk about for Reese, Seth, and Jay on the halftime report. As if to, to say I didn't mean it or to try to catch him. We don't even know if Williamson felt it, but it's not a good look for Frank Howard to stick his right leg out as Williamson's making his way back down the court. No, he clearly tried to trip him, and especially a player that's coming back from an injury, it is more than not a good look for Frank Howard. Luckily, uh, Zion Williamson didn't go down, and we can move on. We don't want to get dragged down the tripping rabbit hole again, as long as it's just one time. Hopefully it won't happen again. Boy, another turnover. Duke turned it over 11 times in the first half. That's the 12th turnover of the game for the Blue Devils. Howard over the top. Chuku is fouled by Delorier. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Well, guys, obviously Duke thrilled with how Zion Williamson looked in that first half. Not just his production, but his stamina. They will continue, though, to try and get him some quick rest here and there. They are concerned, though, how their offense finished that half. I'm told it was way too stagnant. They weren't moving as the half went on. On the Syracuse bench, very pleased with how they played defensively against everybody but Zion. They're concerned the offense has to be better. They have to continue to take care of the ball as they did later in that half. And they want to make sure they're finishing those defensive positions possessions getting the rebound getting out and pushing it a little bit in transition to continue to get some of those shots it kind of overshadowed a little bit or lost in the Zion mania is that Syracuse finished the first half on a big run and they're only down five points right now in this game yeah thanks to Frank Howard who got the ball down court quickly and took advantage of his opportunities basically in transition taking the first open shot rather than you know, trying to grind it out and having to take a difficult shot toward the end of the clock. Reddish has it blocked by Hughes. And Bayheim comes up with it for Syracuse. And Syracuse making a stand on the defensive end. Two good possessions in a row. Rochette had it blocked by Zion Williamson. And back comes Barrett in transition. Trying to go coast to coast. Too many defenders. Blocked but, by Bayheim, right? Yep. Blocked by Bayheim and then out of bounds to Duke. You know, Buddy Beheim came in with a reputation of being a great shooter, and he is a very good shooter, but we've seen in the last couple of nights he can handle, he rebounds. Reddish knocks down a three, and with Williamson back, you wonder if it'll take Reddish a little while to find his role again. Yeah, and find out where his shots are coming from. That's his first make of the ball game. We've been 0 for 4 before that one, but at his feet set, Brissett switches hands and banks it home with the left. Boy, what a beautiful, strong move by O'Shea Brissett. Well, he's a talented player, but that's what he needs to do is put the ball in the deck and get to the rim. There it penetrates, kicks to Jones. Good ball movement by Duke, but good recovery on defense by Syracuse. And a foul inside. Looks like you got Chuku with the body. And it's number four on Chuku, who has basically been a non-factor in this game because of the foul trouble. Yeah, foul trouble's absolutely killed him. And at the moment, at least, Jim Beheim's not making a move to the bench. Talking about the call right now with Ron Groover, one of the officials, and we'll see if he'll get Chuku out of there at some point. They... They actually got good minutes out of Sidibe, who's the, really their third big man. But here comes Dolajai, who, like Chuku, wasn't much of a factor at all in the first half. And with the miss, you know, Dolajai didn't get there in time. With the miss, Chuku's got to stay in there. Yeah. 
Hughes backs it out. Howard rises up for a three around and out. And the rebound to Barrett. And Barrett can rip and go. Another three attempted by Trey Jones, who's just a 25% long range shooter on the season. And I don't think Jim Beheim minds giving up that shot. You just don't want to give up an open shot to Cam Reddish or R.J. Barrett. And now Chuku will sit probably for a long while as Dolezal checks back in for the Orange. And Howard, a kickball is the cause. He deflected that ball with his leg, so it'll go back to Duke. After Duke passes the ball, they need to pass and move instead of passing and standing. You know, Allison Williams had talk about, talked about get a, getting better movement in the offense. That does, just doesn't mean people flashing into the middle or Zion Williams and getting to the middle. It means the perimeter players have to do a good job of moving as well. And they just turned it over. Are, are players, generally speaking today, Jay, less comfortable playing against a zone than they are man-to-man? -man? No, well, I, I think it's, it's not just today. It's always. I mean, Syracuse plays a, a defense that not many teams play. And so they're always playing against your second best offense. You know, you're not always practicing your zone offense in practice. And I remember Rick Patino when I, when I was you know, studying zone years and years ago and went up to see Jim Beheim and kind of explain this to me. And I called Rick Patino and he said one thing that's always stuck with me. He says, I've never seen a man, a zone offense that's as good as a man offense. And why would I want to play, wouldn't I want to play against your second best offense more often? And, you know, Jim Beheim plays this because he knows he's going to see the same thing over and over again. There, there are only five or six things you can do to be effective against a zone. Syracuse defends that all the time. And so you're not, you're not practicing this stuff. He's taking Duke out of what they normally do. It doesn't mean they can't play really well. They can't win. But it's a, it's a totally different look. And Jim Beheim is going to make you take shots you don't normally take and don't normally want to take. And even when you spend a couple of days practicing against it leading up to a Syracuse game, you just can't simulate the length that the Orange has. Yeah, not, not usually. I mean, and, and honestly, this zone is not as good as some of the zones Jim's had in the past because, I mean, right now in the middle, you got Mark Dolezal, who's a terrific player. I mean, he's 180 pounds. You know, that's a lot different than some of the guys that, you know, like Rakeem Christmas or guys they've had in the middle before. And without Tyus Battle up top, you're taking away a guy who makes a lot of steals and can really challenge things, not to mention his scoring ability. And Trey Jones called for the foul right up in the cylinder of Frank Howard. Seven-point lead for Duke. It's still to come up to this game tonight. Some Pac-12 action from Las Vegas. Oregon and Utah in quarterfinal action next year on ESPN. Dana Altman recently given an extension by the Ducks and all bets are off uh, anything seems possible in the Pac-12 tournament right now and as Mr. Billis has told us keep an eye on Colorado roll Tad Tad Boyle you know where Tad Boyle went to school I do not he played at Kansas uh, boy Howard's having hot. a night yep H-O-T hot I think Frank Howard likes the green light. Syracuse down by only five. And remember, they're doing this without their top scorer in Tyus Battle. And now R.J. Barrett has called for an offensive foul. Mark Dolezal taking the charge. It looked initially like R.J. Barrett had the angle. Yeah, that's a, that's a block. That's not close. Number three on Barrett. He stays in the game. It's amazing how often when a guy falls down, they give you a charge. I mean, that just wasn't close. Brissett, nice look. Dolajai rolls around and comes off. Well, that would have made it a one-possession game. A point blank, but challenged. Dolajai is such a good passer. Another turnover. Timeout on the floor. We got a close one here for the fourth and final quarterfinal of the ACC tournament. ESPN's exclusive president.
bring Golden State Warriors out, we'll play. If it's Duke, we'll play. If it's uh, Syracuse, we'll play. I'm, I'm being honest. I care about how our team does. Roy Williams, when he was asked after their win over Louisville if there was any part of them that wanted to see Duke, and he said, frankly, my dear, they'll play whoever they play, whether it's Duke or Syracuse. Carolina's on to the semis. The first semi tomorrow night will be Virginia, the top seed, against Florida State. And right now, the focus of the defense has to be on Frank Howard. He's the only one consistently putting up points. But Duke has been turning the ball over at such a high rate, 15 turnovers. Good for recovery Duke. there by Reddish. They're able to knock the ball away even after Elijah Hughes was able to get his shoulders passed and get a lane to the basket. And four of those Duke turnovers coming in the first five minutes of the second half. Good rebound. And Brissett is fouled and will head to the free throw line. And Syracuse playing with a little more zip in their step here in the second half. They are right back in this game. O'Shea Brissett, the leading rebounder on this Syracuse team, seven and a half boards a game. But he's not the leading offensive rebounder. That's Pascal Chuku, who's on the bench with four fouls. And he went after that one with two hands, couldn't block him out. And Jay, a little bit of a foul situation now for Duke as well. And Duke's a little bit deeper than Syracuse. Syracuse playing without Tyus Battle, their leading scorer. But Reddish just picked up his third. Barrett's got three, and Dolajai comes up with an offensive rebound. Good fake. Beheim trying to drive it all the way to the goal, knocked out of bounds, but it still belongs to the Orange. I thought that might have gone off of Beheim, but we're 80 feet away. You know, and Duke is without Marquise Bolden, their big guy and rim protector, and a very good offensive rebounder as well. And that takes another player to play behind the zone and, you know, flatten it out a little bit. And then offensive rebounded as well. Brissett wants to post up on Trey Jones. Good Spins move. and scores. What a great drop step move by O'Shea Brissett. A two point game. Syracuse has shown a great deal of toughness in this game. Over the top to Williamson again. Well, Elijah Hughes got stuck on top. Just threw it to the rim, and nobody knows how to better finish. And then, geez, Frank Howard just waltzed all the way to the bucket. Poor defense by Duke after the slam by Zion Williamson. Howard now with a 19 and again. Syracuse back within two. Williamson a perfect 10 for 10 tonight. 23 points. Got both Williamson and Barrett working inside. Wow. One-handed put back off the glass. He's got 25. Weak side rebounding. Bayheim a good look, and they're trading buckets now. Boy, and Syracuse really taking advantage of Duke's lack of transition defense. Even after a bucket, just giving up a wide open three. Jones with an 18-footer, too strong. And a foul going against the Orange. Zion Williamson on the weak side. Shot comes from the right side. He is on the left. And just able to essentially box out Elijah Hughes. And then with that left hand, tip that back in. The controlled tip off the glass. And Williamson, like R.J. Barrett, is left-handed. First player since Tyler Hansbro 10 years ago to have 20, 10, and 5 steals in an ACC tournament game. Now we got better than 13 minutes left. And almost another turnover on the out of bounds underneath, but a terrific play by R.J. Barrett. Beheim ties wow. it. Buddy Beheim drills a three, and we're all tied at 46. And Jim Beheim yelling out to the officials that Buddy Beheim got hit on the arm on that shot. But Buddy Beheim came hunting that shot, and he is saying he got hit. Referee saying, hey, you know, I don't want to hear it. Well, he's not lying. He got hit. Boy, what a terrific shot, and he's hunting it. That is one confident shooter right now. And Mom Julie very happy watching her son, who had a great game against Pittsburgh, follow it up with an excellent game against Duke as well. 
Look at the three-point shooting for the Orange here in the last two nights in Charlotte. Remember, Buddy Beheim did not get off to a good start shooting the ball in his first four or five games this year, but ever since then, he has been terrific. He has earned his minutes and have become a real force for Syracuse in recent games. But Trey Jones is an excellent passer on out-of-bounds underneath situations. He's able to look off his primary target, got that ball to R.J. Barrett for a, a layup off out-of-bounds underneath. Brissett posting on Barrett. One-on-one. -on -one. And a foul. I think it was Reddish who came over, and if it is on Reddish, it's going to be his fourth. And it is. O'Shea Brissett has been very aggressive in the post going against R.J. Barrett. Faced him up and then immediately tacked in the, attacked in the lane and got right past him and forced Cam Reddish to come over and try to stop it. Well, and you said it. This is the best version of Brissett, right? Like a oh, guy yeah. who posts and goes to the bucket, offensive rebounds, as Reddish has to sit down with a four. Well, er early on in the season, I thought O'Shea Brissett settled for a lot of jump shots, but, and he's more of an attack player. I mean, he needed more paint touches because he's such a, an elite talent. One of two for Brissett, Duke by one. That'll look to Williamson, and remember, Delorier's behind the zone in that read spot. So if the wings come up, you can look to him. Runner by Trey Jones makes it a three-point game. Duke led by as many as 17. It's just a three-point lead right now. Brissett attacking again, but Delorier there to meet him. Boy, what a nice block by Delorier. Delorier had some really good minutes against North Carolina. Jordan Goldwire in the backcourt now with Jones. Remember, Goldwire not a shooter. So Syracuse can play off him and give more attention in the paint, more attention to Zion Williamson. Barrett will put up a three. Knocked around, and Duke gets it back. And Delorier foul. As we step aside with a media timeout, 11.09 to go, but a game that is very close, very interesting, and very meaningful here in Charlotte as they have been trading buckets in recent minutes. A monster night for Zion Williamson, but Syracuse isn't going away. We need to get our versatile performance brought to you by Dove. And versatile, powerful, remarkable, whatever adjective you want to use, we've seen it all from Zion Williamson and I. And those that wondered whether after a couple of weeks off with an MCL sprain in that right knee, whether Zion Williamson would have his bounce, would have his pop and explosiveness, I think the answer is an emphatic yes. 25 points, 11 rebounds, six of those on the offensive end, five steals, and 11 for 11 from the field. A couple of free throws to extend the lead to five for Duke. Syracuse, which trailed by as many as 17, got it down to one a couple of minutes ago. Led by Frank Howard offensively, and in the second half, Buddy Beheim knocking down some shots. Yeah, Syracuse shooting 58% in this second half. And almost a slip to the basket by O'Shea Brissett, but they missed him. Brissett's had some good moments in the second half as well. See if they can get Elijah Hughes going. Goldwire all over Beheim, Balls loose, and Williamson's got it. Barrett misses the layup, and back come the Orange. Beheim for three. Oh, what an attempt to follow there by Brissett, and he is fouled. Well, Syracuse coming down in transition, and Beheim not hesitating at all. And it has been the right play to get the transition three and then the offensive glass open. Delorier taking himself out of the play, trying to block that shot. And Williamson just trailing the play a little bit and almost a tremendous finish off the tip dunk by O'Shea Brissett.
Second game in as many nights for the Orange. They took care of Pitt in the second round last night. This is the first game here in Charlotte for Duke. They earned the double bye by finishing in the top four. Three-point game as we near the midway point of the second half. Duke has turned the ball over 15 times in this game, four times in the second half. Jones can't find the range from beyond the arc. And that's the shot that Feheim wants them to take. Big play by Jordan Goldwire and a chance for three. As Syracuse had secured the rebound and Duke was able to knock it away. And Jim Beheim not happy at all. Grabs the rebound and it was Williamson that knocked it away from Frank Howard. And Jordan Goldwire takes advantage of it. That's a huge three-point play. For Goldwire, just his seventh field goal of the season. A guy who comes in, gives him a spark, plays some defense. Was very good for them and wins over Louisville and Wake, two very close games. But again, as you said, not a guy they look for for offense, look towards for offense. I'm not sure what Trey Jones was doing there. I mean, that was not a disciplined defensive play by Jones. He basically dove right in front of Frank Howard, tried to knock that ball away, and now it sends Howard to the free throw line when he was... 50 feet away from the basket. You know, and Jones is a great defender, but that was not that was not his usual smart play. Seventh team foul on Duke, so Howard's at the line. Syracuse has committed six fouls, so we're going to have a lot of free throws over the next 10 minutes, and neither one of these teams particularly good at the line. Frank Howard has had an outstanding basketball game to this point. Williamson. Everything is going. He's a perfect 12 for 12. What do you do? It's not like he's making easy shot after easy shot. That was a difficult finish going away from the basket. Hughes sees a scene, and Williamson with a rejection. Man, oh man. Well, you have to think you're going to hear footsteps every time you go to the basket because Williamson can cover so much ground and then get up and erase that shot. Barrett for three. The two really big plays. The steal, Williamson knocks it away. Goldwire gets the conventional three-point play. And then Zion Williamson with the block. Watch Williamson just timing this. Gee. And then blocking it before. <laughs> it, it, it almost cracked him in the head. And then the flash right into the middle and getting the ball to go off the glass. Zion Williamson has done absolutely everything in this game. And yet Syracuse has kept it close. Those two plays, uh, it was a one possession game before those two Williamson plays led to six points. Three by Goldwire, three by Barrett. Beheim at the line, and he's into double figures now as he makes it an eight point game. A very thin Syracuse team tonight. Tyus battle out with a bad back, so, or uh, a bruise of his tailbone, soreness in his lower back, so he is not playing. For the second night in a row, they haven't gotten much at all out of Chuku because of the foul trouble. So that basically makes them a seven-man team tonight. And Jalen Carey's only played a couple of minutes here and there, so six guys have done the bulk of the minutes for the Orange tonight. Well, not the first time that Syracuse has been a seven-man team. It's yeah. just a different seven. And Buddy Feheim has come in, done a fantastic job in this game. He's done a good job defensively. Another Duke turnover, their 16th on the night. Well, just out of sync against the zone. 16 turnovers against the Syracuse zone. And that is one big factor why Syracuse is still within seven points. The four semifinalists determined already here for the ACC tournament in Charlotte. The top seed of Virginia, they'll take on the fourth seed, Florida State, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. The second seed, Carolina, defeating Louisville earlier tonight, awaiting the winner of this one. 
between Duke and Syracuse. The Blue Devils up by seven right now in the orange with 8.33 to go. Duke shooting 51% for the game, 23 of 45. But Zion Williamson is shooting 100%. Everybody else shooting 33%. Williamson's 12 of 12 in this game. And has added 11 rebounds and five steals. All five of the steals in the first half. Howard, no. Dolezal keeps it alive, but it belongs to Duke. Goldwire stays in the game, so it's Goldwire and Jones along with Williamson, Barrett, and Delorier right now for Duke. Williamson got a little screen from Javin Delorier, just curled right around it into the lane. So hard to stop. Under eight media timeout, as we'll step aside with the Duke leading by seven. Didn't we just have a timeout? <laughs> I love my bike. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. We know that life doesn't fit into any one plan, so start a plan that flexes with yours. And Arby's. All clock Eastern time. Kyle Guy was remarkable today. Made seven threes for Virginia in their quarterfinal win. Florida State had to get a three at the end of regulation and then a game-winning shot by Terrence Mann to take care of of Virginia Tech in the other quarterfinal and should it be a very interesting semifinal we'll have North Carolina against the winner of this one in the second semi Allison Williams was near the Syracuse huddle during the last time out Allison what'd you find out yeah Dan and I'll tell you what they're asking their guys to show some mental fortitude offensively they want them to really be aggressive and attack that basketball go attack the basket go up strong on the other end they want him to get a body on Zion. They say they're getting he's getting too many free runs to the rim and too many uncontested shots around the basket. So that's a tall ask asking them yeah. to be pretty fearless in there. Yeah, not the easiest thing for guys to volunteer for is Chuku's come back into the game for the first time in a long time for Syracuse. Brissett's gone out and Elijah Hughes, who's had a quiet night, just his second field goal of the game and it makes it a five point game. Well, that was a really good pull up jump shot by Elijah Hughes. And to Allison Williams point. I'm not sure one body against Zion Williams is going to do it. It might need to be two bodies. Trey Jones knocks down a three. His first in six attempts tonight. Hughes feeling it. Battle for the rebound. It belongs to Duke. It's a big possession right here. If Syracuse can get a stop. This is, this is one of those possessions where Duke could move this out if they can get a score. Barrett misses the three and it belongs to the Orange down by eight less than seven minutes to go. Not sure that was the shot that Duke wanted. Duke now six for 20 from three point range tonight. 30 percent right about their season average from beyond the arc. Dolajai shovel pass inside to Chuku taken away by Delorier That's and it. Chuku just fouled out. A tough play for Chuku. Not much he could do there. Just trying to run down court on the broken play. and continues on the Syracuse bench. O'Shea Brissett back into the game for the Orange. And all of a sudden, it's back to 10. Syracuse hasn't really been able to get much at all in the paint. It's been, I think the difference is almost 20 points, 36-16 or so. Got a switch now with Delorier guarding Howard. Howard with a floater and a late whistle and a foul will send him to the line for two. Or will it go in the other way? Going, forgive me, my mistake, an offensive foul called on Frank Howard. His second. And Jim Beheim will use a timeout. Hoping to 
turn this one around before it slips away. Sports Center tonight after Oregon, Utah with Stan Verrett and Zubin Mahenzie. They'll take you inside Zion Williamson's return. There's certainly plenty to talk about. He plays from around the country from all the different conference tournaments. And Zach Levine and Larry Markinen will be judging the best dunks. We don't know if Zion's dunks will be in there, but they are certainly among the best dunks that we have seen today. And one thing that appears to be trending has been the play of Zion Williamson from the field it has been perfect he has not missed a shot from the field he's missed a few free throws other than that Williamson has been impressive to say the least this blocked shot Elijah Hughes going to the basket he's off the ground Williamson has yet to leave the ground but quickly and explosively gets his head near the rim blocks it before it can get to the backboard and knocks it away with that left hand. His spectacular play after spectacular play from Zion Williamson. Jay, if he doesn't miss a field goal attempt the rest of the way, he will do a couple of things that have never been done before. He's 12 for 12 from the field. Nobody's ever been 12 for 12 or better in an ACC tournament game. And no Duke player in any game ever has been 12 for 12 or better. I think five dunks, right? Five dunks, one three-pointer, and the other six around the rim, getting to his strong hand, getting to his left hand, and knocking them home from close range. He just affects every part of the game. Offensive rebound, Williamson, 13 for 13. Just unstoppable. Snatches that rebound, and then... Kisses it off the glass, and Syracuse was powerless to stop it. And obviously, a huge development when you look at the national landscape as a whole and the teams that could cut down the nets. Duke with Zion Williamson, just uh, obviously a much better team than Duke without Zion Williamson. They went 3-3 three and three without him, albeit against very tough competition. Lost twice to Carolina and once at Virginia Tech. But this puts them squarely in the middle of the conversation for national champion along with a few other programs numbers now for Syracuse Hughes can't finish it Jones will be called for the foul. Now the one problem that Duke has had all night and you give great credit to the Syracuse defense has been turnovers. And when Duke doesn't turn the ball over they've been scoring and scoring very efficiently. But what is that 17 turnovers. One thing that's helped them is Syracuse has been nearly as sloppy with the ball. They've turned it over 15 times. Reddish back in for the first time in a while. He's got four fouls. Just a seven point game and a lot of time left in this one. There is a lot of time. Three possession game. And Mike Krzyzewski continues to get minutes out of Jordan Goldwire. It's the four freshmen, and it's not White, not O'Connell, not DeLaurier right now. It's Jordan Goldwire in the game still for Duke. If Duke gets a good shot, even if they miss it, Williamson has the opportunity to rebound it. It's so effective on the offensive glass. How about Goldwire with his second bucket of the night? And good minutes, especially on the defensive end. He's guarding... Buddy Beheim. Beheim moved very well without the ball, but Goldwire stayed with him, not really helping off, just trying to take away Beheim's three-point shooting abilities right there on the on the catch. Howard over Williamson. Tough shot. Krzyzewski calling out a play, moving Goldwire over this way, Reddish over that way as we move near the final four minutes. Here comes the pressure from the orange, going to trap a little bit more, it looks like. Williamson can make a play in there. Great pass. He had R.J. Barrett along the baseline and Cam Reddish opposite at the three-point line. 
And it's back to a dozen now for the Blue Devils. Tough shot by Payheim. Boy, he's having a night. He's got 13 after 20 against Pitt last night. A 10-point lead for the Blue Devils with 3.39 to go. Florida State taking on to Virginia. We know we've got North Carolina taking on the winner of this one. Duke with a 10-point lead, 3.39 to go. A great finish to the first half and start to the second half for Syracuse. Got a 17-point deficit down to one. But it's just been too much Zion. 13 for 13, 29 points, 13 rebounds, five steals, two assists, and a block. Just a remarkable performance. 17 points, five rebounds, all those six turnovers for R.J. Barrett. And Trey Jones has eight assists in this ballgame. Syracuse trying to step up the pressure and force some turnovers, but they commit a foul, and Duke is likely to have a very length, fairly lengthy parade to the free throw line over the next three and a half. Number three on Hughes. Tied with the Brad Doherty for the most consecutive field goals made in a game, but again, nobody has ever finished a game. 13 for 13 or better in an ACC tournament game. The record is held by Carlos Boozer, who was 11 for 11. The all-time record in NCAA history, any game, anybody, Clifford Rozier of Louisville back in 1993 went 15 for 15 in a game. Wire still on Buddy Beheim. And two more for Frank Howard. He's got 23. And has not had easy shots. Barrett pushing and will go to the line after the foul on Sidibe. A smart play by R.J. Barrett. After the Frank Howard bucket, Duke inbounded it really quickly. And then Barrett was able to get out in the open floor. And rather than run clock, when you've got an opportunity to get into the chest of Sidibe and go to the free throw line, you take it. And R.J. Barrett has scored more points this year than any freshman in ACC history. He's got 742 points right now. Leads the ACC in scoring. Was named first team all ACC. I think his lowest output scoring-wise in any game this year was 13 points. It's remarkable. Yep. Set wants a touch and he gets it. Got Jones on him. Beheim with a tough pull up. Banks it home. He banked home a three in last night's game. And again, with Syracuse pressuring, a chance for some runouts for Duke, but they'll pull it out and run a little time with a 10 point lead. And now they're extending. Syracuse has to extend that defense. They can't just sit back and let Duke run clock. Tipped away, and it's off the fingertips of Williamson. So it goes over to the orange. And I wouldn't think that would count as a field goal attempt if you're just thinking about the fact that he hasn't missed a shot tonight. 13 for 13, just a turnover, I would think. Yeah, that's not yeah. a, that's not a yeah. shot at all. If Syracuse can get a score here, put some pressure on. Might have an opportunity to put a little game pressure back on Duke. Howard. Brissett. And a foul will send him to the line for two. Howard with the discard and then getting it into Brissett. Brissett has been very aggressive throughout this game. This is the O'Shea Brissett I think Jim Beheim wants to see all the time. Has only attempted two threes in this game. Made one of them. That's his 14th point. You know, Syracuse some nights they struggle so much offensively, but when they're playing well, and again, remember they're without Tyus Battle tonight, as we've seen in recent NCAA tournaments, when they're playing well, they can beat anybody. 
You know, one year from a, a bubble team all the way to the Final Four. And, and I think this Syracuse team with battle back, especially now that Buddy Beheim has come on to be a terrific contributor. You know, Syracuse can really be a, a scary team to play in the tournament because you know, most teams don't see this zone. I think they're especially difficult to prepare for in NCAA tournament play. You know, the ACC teams see it at least once a year, sometimes twice. And in this case, Duke's seen it three times. But you get to the NCAA tournament, those teams don't see this very often. Right. And, and sometimes you only have one day to prepare exactly, for it. Exactly. Exactly. Which yeah. can be really difficult. You get mired in it once you play against it. But with battle back, uh, you could see Syracuse giving people a hard time. Well, if Duke is able to hang on and win this game, we'll have three top five teams in the country in the semifinals tomorrow night. And also what we would have is round three between Duke and Carolina. And for the first time, with Zion Williamson really a part of it for the Blue Devils. Boy, and if Duke is able to hang on, that would be an interesting second game. It's one thing to play two games in a row, and Syracuse is a is an interesting challenge, but it's not as much of an up and down game. For when well, you play against North Carolina, that's going to be a real test of the uh, of the conditioning of Zion Williamson to go up and down like that. Now he look, he's answered answered every question in this game, but you know not playing and then going into you know three games in three days is a different deal. He just threw a home run pass that Goldwire ran down and he feeds Barrett. That was beautiful. Well, so maybe maybe it's uh, maybe the Kyler Murray decision isn't over. <laughs> I always thought if he chose football, he'd be a tight end. <laughs> it looks like he could be a quarterback. Yeah. You want to talk about a hockey assist right there from Zion Williamson. Yeah. Zion Williamson can do just about anything he wants. I mean, obviously we're joking about the quarterback thing, but holy cow, he's... What a performance for him coming back off an injury. Hope Frank Howard's okay, still down. But Zion Williamson with he's a left-hander. And throws it long right and overthrew him a little bit. Hey, if you can touch it, you can catch it. <laughs> and Goldwire got look at him. Look at look. He's got magic in that left hand. He's gonna have a big bag of cash in it, but three months well and whether you root for Duke or against and obviously there are people on both sides we understand that but the young man loves to play has fun playing shows good positive energy and smiles all the time and what's so bad about that it's fun watching him play basketball That's the officials having a look at that last collision to see if there was anything untoward there and a very quick review we'll get back to it I think Syracuse has to play a prevent defense the way that uh, Zion Williamson threw that ball last time. Doesn't really look like Zion Williamson is on a minutes restriction, does no. it? <laughs> and a foul on Jones. Williamson has played 34 out of 38 minutes tonight. Mike Krzyzewski telling his team, late game situation, no threes, no fouls. Trey Jones on the ACC's all defensive team and rightfully so one of the best defenders in the country both he and Williamson earning bursts on that five man squad Jay the four freshmen have now scored 70 of Duke's 80 points tonight it's pretty much been par for the course all year long that the, the freshmen have totally led the way in scoring Hughes misses Brissett follows Hughes shovels it out. Howard loses it. Goldwire's going to give Barrett another slam. And one of the guys jumping up and down to celebrate that more than any other was Zion Williamson. Another two for Frank Howard. He's putting up one of the biggest nights of his career, but it looks like it will be in a defeat. Syracuse played hard, played well without their leading scorer. In Tyus battle, but the Blue Devils are going to advance to a semifinal against Carolina tomorrow night. Syracuse did play hard and play well in this game, especially without Tyus battle. You know, they had this game in doubt 
for most of it. They just got out Williamson. <laughs> Too much Zion. Yeah, they, I mean, it really did come down to, to Duke has Zion Williamson, and Syracuse doesn't. Yep. They got some guys in foul trouble. They didn't get much out of their big guys tonight. But one thing you know going into Selection Sunday, Syracuse is not on the bubble. Firmly in. And if they're a seven and you're a two, you probably don't want to mess with them because you know that they can be dangerous on any given night. Howard, no. Bear at the rebound. And it looks like no more fouls coming from the orange. Well, Duke will probably take a violation here. Jack White's at the scorer's table. I would imagine number one's coming out for Duke. Number one's got a big smile on his face right now as he's walking around on the perimeter. 20, 30, 29 points yeah. for him, 14 rebounds. And didn't miss a shot. Barrett takes a three, so they don't get the stoppage. Man, Frank Howard, 28. Yeah, he's been terrific. And White will come back to the bench. That is going to be that. Duke will win 84 to 72. A remarkable return for Zion Williamson. 13 for 13. 29 points, 14 rebounds, leading the Blue Devils into the semifinals tomorrow night with an 84 to 72 win. This will be the first time ever that three teams ranked in the top five of the AP poll will all be in the semifinals in the same conference tournament. Virginia and Florida State at 7 o'clock Eastern time and round three between Duke and Carolina at 9 o'clock Eastern time here in what is sure to be an electric building in Charlotte. Three top five teams in the semifinals of a conference tournament. That's amazing. You're unlikely. The odds are he's unlikely to happen at the final four, exactly. let alone a conference tournament. That's amazing. Exactly. Looking forward to round three between Duke and Carolina. I'm sure Zion Williamson is looking forward to really getting a chance to play against Carolina for the first time tomorrow night. Let's see what he has to say. Here's Allison. Thank you guys very much, Zion. How to feel to get back out there? That was great. You know, I love this game. I love my teammates. So the people who thought I wasn't going to return, they weren't smart. Like, I love playing with Duke. I love my teammates, and it was great to be back. What would you want to say to those people who question if you'd come back? I mean, they are entitled to their own opinion. You know, I appreciate the input, but I can't leave my boys hanging. How's the knee feel? Incredible. So some people might think maybe there could be some rust when you haven't played since February 20th. You come out, you go 13 for 13. How do you do that after the extended time off? I mean... I could have came back a few games ago, but, you know, they wanted to get my condition right, make sure I was 110%. So, no thank Duke uh, training staff for that, and they got me better. How much, how much was your mentality coming into this game, show, ready to show people what you're able to do, and how much built-up energy did you have having not played in a while? I mean, I have a lot of energy, <laughs> but I come ready to kill every game. So, it was just great to get back on the court. All right, Zion, how do you feel about a chance to play Carolina tomorrow night? So what? How do you feel about a chance to play Carolina tomorrow night? I mean, I think it's going to be a great game. They're a very great team. And, I mean, it's a rivalry, so I'm excited. Zion, thank you. Thank you. I would imagine a little bit more excited on the inside than he let on on the outside right there. We'll see Zion Williamson and Duke against Carolina tomorrow night. Also, Florida State and Virginia. What a great semifinal night it should be for the ACC tournament. Duke 84, Syracuse 72, Oregon, Utah still to come. For Jay Billis and Allison Williams, I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. Let's send it back to the studio. Kevin Connors, Dallin Cuff, and the hardest working man in show business, Sean Farmer.